Okay, good morning to all. So few of them were in last class and a few of them are very new to this. So just quickly go through the, the topics what we discussed in the last class, then we'll start with our introduction model. So my name is Ravi Kumar and about my experience, I have 11 years of experience in the IT industry where I do take care of Microsoft and VMware product. In Azure, we'll be learning here AZ104, which is the Azure administration part. Okay, so wherein we'll be learning up to like uh, almost 15 modules in this training. In the module one, we'll be covering the introduction to cloud, benefits of cloud, types of cloud computing, types of cloud services, what is Azure, what are the ways we manage Azure, we'll be seeing in the module one. In module two, we'll be covering on the subscription part, right? So like uh, how many subscription we have, or what are the types of subscription, and how we can create the subscription. Once you create the subscription, how do you delegate the control to other administrators? And what is Azure Resource Manager? And how do you create the resource group and how do you manage the resource group? We'll be seeing in the module two. In module three, we'll be seeing like, uh, how do you deploy the compute workload, a virtual machine in the Azure? And uh, how do you manage your uh, a VM, like uh, as a part of uh, automation, like what is ARM template? How do you create the workload using the ARM template? We'll be seeing the overview. And also we'll be discussing about the virtual machine configuration, like what is VM, how to, what are the different configuration of VM? We'll be getting it, so in the module three. And as a part of uh, cost perspective, you know, like how do you create your, uh, uh, like, whenever you get any requirement to host any services in cloud. So you want to know what is the cost, right? So with the help of Azure Calculator, we'll be seeing like uh, um, how to put our requirement and uh, how do we get the costing that. So we will be seeing on the Azure Calculator. And also we'll be seeing the storage solution, right? So if you have some data, how do you keep the data in the cloud? and what are the ways you can access and you can manage the data. We'll be seeing in the Azure storage. So Azure storage solution to keep your data in the cloud. And also we'll be seeing like uh, what is networking and how do you create virtual network in cloud. When you have more than one uh, virtual network, how do you work on it? Okay. And uh, when you want to securely access your Azure workload from your individual machine, how do you enable the VPN? What are the ways you can connect your Azure workload using site-to-site -side or point-to-site VPN? And also we'll try to understand what is a load balancer here, right? So how do you deploy the load balancer? And uh, what are the ways you'll be managing your uh, load, the load in a scalability using the load balancer. This will be doing a real time scenario. And also we'll be seeing on the network security group, like how do you control your traffic flow within your Azure, right? So whatever the traffic which is uh, moving around, so how do you monitor and control your traffic flow? We'll be seeing in the network security group. In general admin tasks, we'll be seeing like, how do you add the disk? How do you remove the disk, right? So additional uh, disk to your virtual machine, that data disk we call. And uh, how do you horizontally scale your virtual machine? And what are the network properties you can do with respect to your VM? And uh, how do you take a snapshot? What are the recovery options? And how do you capture your custom image? So these are the day-to-day -day activity where it will be coming across. We'll be discussing like how do we work on it? I also will be covering on the uh, high availability services, right? So if you want to host a virtual machine in a high availability services, right? So what are the ways you can host? And what is availability set? What is availability zone? And what is scale set? We'll be covering in this uh, module nine. Okay. And also we'll be covering two pass service, which is the web app and the SQL database. Okay, we'll be covering this. And also we'll be seeing about the Azure Active Directory, right? So how do you create your users, groups, and uh, in the cloud? And what is Azure AD? What is Azure AD premium features? And how do you add your custom domain to your tenant? How do you configure and manage the MFA? And how do you integrate your on-prem Active Directory with Azure AD using AD Connect? So this will be covered 
module 12 and uh, we'll be covering uh, this one right so the data protection how do you protect your files and folders in the azure so what are the ways right so like uh, how if you have the files and folders in on prem which you want to protect or if you want to protect your on premises virtual machine and if you want to protect your azure vm so how do you protect using the azure recovery services we'll be seeing that and also we'll be covering uh, monitoring and troubleshooting right so how do you monitor your workload in cloud and how do you troubleshoot the connectivity issues so these are the topics what we'll be covering in this entire training okay any questions any doubts on this content part let me know anything if you want to include apart from this with respect to the azure admin we can include that yeah please tell yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, is the CICD is covering in this area uh, or is it a different concept? So CICD comes under your uh, this, uh, DevOps. Not is in it? this uh, one. Yeah, it's not related to the Azure admin, that's right. Okay, is the container part uh, is covering the, under this? Container, I'll give you the introduction, what is container and what is uh, uh, Kubernetes, right? So the introduction okay. part will be covered. So Azure, Kubernetes, that, Azure, Azure yeah. Kubernetes will be covered. Yeah, only the introduction part will be covered. Okay. So that, that was the reason we added my 104 earlier. It was not there in 103. Yes, yes, yes. That's micro containers or something is there, right? Exactly. Because okay. that under as a development part right so development and DevOps part but still here we will be seeing like how do you run the container service here that's it and uh, this uh, i asked us uh, and uh, this one sas that's which one? so ias and pass will be covered which is what's the machine the other few services will be discussed on pass so SaaS is completely different part. Like if you take an example as Office 365, it's completely a different thing. So at least uh, will it be covered? What is what like uh, at least a little bit of uh, SaaS so that uh, we can't keep a blank face once we get something in interview? See, uh, SaaS in a sense, uh, there are different services in SaaS. So we'll be seeing like what is IAS, what is PaaS and what is SaaS. So we'll get an idea of that. So when you say SaaS, there are different services. Like if you take Office 365 as one of the service, which is example for SaaS. Okay. So in that case, Office 365 is a completely different content. Correct now. And uh, one more thing. Uh, this uh, after the course, like you know, if we get any job, any support will be given, like you know. I mean to say it's a new thing if you're going into a new environment uh, kind of stuff. So mostly we'll be doing work from home itself. Mm -hmm. So if we need any kind of support, like, you know. Yeah, we'll provide the support. So what you can do, you can talk to our coordinator. She can help you out on that, the information. Okay, okay. That will definitely so, help help out. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, all right. Any other questions, any other doubts? And also I can say this uh, training will be 90% uh, uh, practical oriented. So we'll discuss about the service. Then we'll be seeing like how to deploy the service in a real time. We'll be creating the Azure account and we'll be working there. Even I'll be helping to create your account where you can do your practicals as well. Any questions? Let me know. Otherwise, we'll start with the introduction part. Uh, hi, Ravi. Myself, Chandra Babu. So, is there any uh, prerequisites uh, needed for this learning this Azure uh, I mean, administration? Yeah, I'll cover that. I'll cover that in this slide. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions apart from this? Okay, all right. So now let's see the learning part in Microsoft Azure. So now, if I want to uh, start a career as an Azure admin, so what are the learning tracks, right? So there are different tracks in Azure to learn. 
right so now there are two main things uh, what we will be learning one is the developing solution in cloud and administering the services in the cloud right so those are the main two tracks and again you can see there are other things like security networking core networking data science and so on okay so now when you see the learning path so what there are different courses right azure fundamental azure admin azure uh, developer and uh, devops azure architect right so what is the learning steps so az900 is the azure fundamentals content right so this az900 consists of azure fundamentals which talks completely theoretical part about the cloud benefits of cloud types of cloud and what is azure what are the types of services available in azure right so all these things will be covered in the um, az900 okay and then AC104 is a course content what we'll be learning, but sadly it was 103 and now it is 104. And 104 which talks about the Azure administration, right? So here it's completely on the administration part. So no developing here. So we don't develop anything on the AC104. We'll be learning like how to create the workflow, how do you manage? We'll be seeing in the Azure administration. Suppose if you are looking on a development part, AC204 is the right content which talks about the developing solution in the Azure Admins. If you are from a developing background, or if you want to build your career as Azure, like uh, developing in Azure Cloud, right? So you can choose this developing solution for Microsoft Azure. Okay, so these are the two contents, what you can see, uh, course, uh, uh, what do you say? There are two tracks which you can see for the Azure learning path. And if at all, if you are interested in Azure DevOps, so there are two parts, like two parts, how you can learn. So one is you can learn 104 plus AZ104. So with this, you'll have a sufficient uh, amount of knowledge for Azure DevOps engineer expert, or you can learn 204 plus AZ400. Okay, so this two track will help you to learn about the Azure DevOps engineer expert. So these are the two learning tracks. So if you're looking for a next level, which is architect, so you can learn 104 plus AZ305. So this is the two papers what you can learn where you can have a knowledge of Azure Solution Architect Expert. So all these are retired. Okay. So 104, in order to learn 104 to AZ900 is not a mandatory. It's not a mandatory, it's a optional, optional certification, okay? So the required fundamentals knowledge will be covered in our 104. So wherein we'll be learning from a scratch, we'll build and manage your infrastructure, okay? AZ900 is an optional certification and also optional learning, but in our training, it will be covered. So it is 900 plus 104, you can take it in that way. Okay, so this is the learning part and certification part. Any questions on this? Okay. So now let's consider you have chosen that I want to go with 104, right? So what are the prerequisites here, right? So what I need to learn or what I need to know, right? So in order to um, learn AZ104, wherein we'll be starting from the scratch in the cloud. So here we don't uh, manage on the data center level or physical hardware level. So we don't require any core knowledge on network, physical storage or the hardware, the virtualization or the OS part. But there is some prerequisite where it we need to know. So where you should be knowing how do you manage your OS, right? So Windows or Linux, how do you manage it? In the sense, here you don't require to have a core level of Windows and uh, Linux knowledge. If you know how to connect and how to log in and how to access and manage, that's well and good, okay? And also you should be knowing about the virtualization concept. So what is virtualization? How you can work with the virtualization you should be knowing. And also you should be knowing about the basics of cloud infrastructure anyways and that will be covered and basics about the storage so what are the types of storage we use and how it works and overview and also the networking so networking is very important so you should know about the networking the basics of networking 
here there is no expertise level required so wherein you require the high level things in the sense uh, like not in-depth OS knowledge is required so if you know some basic like how do you connect your windows or linux machine how do you troubleshoot the connectivity issues right so how do you log in right so these are the things where it should be knowing and virtualization as an overview what is virtualization because whatever we deploy here everything is a virtualized so you should know what is virtualization how things will be connected and how things will be working and overview not on the expertise level but if you want to learn more yes you can do that okay so networking also here also as i told you we are not managing any networking hardware so you should be knowing what is the networking and the other concepts of networking okay yeah you should be knowing other uh, uh, services like what is dns how it works what is vpn how it works what is firewall what is encryption and also you should have understanding about the active directory concept you should know what is backup what is restore what is disaster recovery right so these are all the topics wherein you should know and overview okay if you want to learn more you can otherwise you should know like what is backup why we required how that will help in our infrastructure what is disaster recovery how that will help in our infrastructure to build right so this concept wise you should be knowing it yeah so this is about the prerequisites any questions on this Hi, good morning, Ravi. This is Sandeep. Hey, hi, Sandeep. Good morning. Yeah, I am. What are you saying? These are all comes under AZ104, right? No, these are the prerequisite which you need to learn. So either you should be knowing okay. or you can learn along with okay. that. I'll share some link. Okay. You can wrap. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, so here I mean to say if you want to deploy a virtual machine in our on-prem what we will do we will have a physical hardware we will configure the physical hardware we will install the hypervisor we will configure the network we will configure the storage then we will uh, install the operating system and we will manage from there right so that's how we do it in our on-prem wherein you should have all this knowledge but in cloud it's not like that right so wherein uh, some part of the work or some scope are taken care of by uh, the vendor like microsoft and some part will be taken care of by the customer that is we so uh that's how it runs so that's why i told you like you don't require to be an expert is in virtualization or os or network or storage but you should have an idea or you should have a knowledge so if i say a virtual disk so what it will be how it will be on a back end and as a high level so when i say the ip addresses right so what are the types of ip address classes of ip address what is submitting overview right so all this thing you should be knowing it yeah any other questions okay So now you may have a question saying that uh, what will be uh, an Azure admin role or what will be the day-to-day -day activity when I complete this Azure admin or when I onboard as an Azure administrator, right? So what will be my day-to-day -day job or jobs or roles and responsibilities? So as a cloud administrator, wherein you will be managing the services which are created in the cloud, so it can be the compute, it can be the storage, or it can be the network. So where in the cloud, entire IT lifecycle model will be, will be managed, like developing solution, testing solution, hosting the solution, and updating or upgrading as and when required, and decommissioning or removing of the services in the cloud, right? So entire IT lifecycle model will be managed in the cloud. So they will take, wherein we will be taking the end user require requests, like uh, if someone says create a VM, right and um, someone says like uh, okay any services if you want to create you're going to create in the cloud and wherein you'll be monitoring the services running the cloud like uh, optimizing the utilization like if it is underutilized or utilized right so fine-tuning of your services in the cloud 
and also sometime we'll be working with the external vendors right so we'll be working with the external vendors to manage the things okay and also what are the ways you'll be managing your azure so you'll be managing azure using two way one is to the azure portal through the browser base using graphical user interface and through another through the command line interface right so these are the two ways wherein you'll be managing your azure infrastructure okay yeah, as a successful cloud administrator, you'll be taking care of the OS administration, virtualization, and the cloud infrastructure, storage, and the networking, right? So these are the things for what you'll be taking care in the cloud. Yeah, any questions on this? yeah all right so this we have covered in the last uh, like we have discussed like what will be covering this entire training yeah any questions so far let me know otherwise we'll start with our one introduction slide today uh hi ravi hey hi subhash uh, yeah generally uh the architect uh, this infrastructure services means generally it is one time setup no? Uh, next, what 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 Azure admin will do? General. Uh, See, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, your question is like once the infrastructure is built, what will be our job, mm. our day to day? Yes. Correct. So even you can take example of your on-prem. No, like uh, even in on in our on-prem, we will have the infrastructure ready. And once the infrastructure is ready, what will be the Windows admin or what will be the Linux admin? What will be the storage guy? What will the network guy will do? Right. So there will be a new configuration wherein you have to build a, a new setup or upgrade the existing one or work on troubleshooting any issues and do any maintenance. Right. So all those things activity will be coming across every day. Right. So accordingly, you'll be taking the request and will be working. So here uh, in a cloud wherein we don't take care of end to end. Correct. Now, like if you create a VM from VM onwards, you will take care. So the work will be less, but still. So that's why wherein you'll be learning. Uh, all the perspective like to build the services on the windows or linux machine or configure the storage configure the network and other services as and when required and whenever there is an issue with uh, you will be working with troubleshooting on it and whenever you get an additional requirement to create a service or, or decommission the service right so those those kind of requests will be coming across and you'll be managing it Okay, Ravi. Uh, generally, Windows admin, uh, they will get every month patches. Uh, they will do that one. In Azure, uh, it will automatically, it, it will upgrade. Uh, that's why I'm uh, It okay, will automatically see. upgrade by Microsoft. No? Uh, that is my question. No, what will happen here, uh, there are different types of services you will come across. One is IAS and another one is PASS. So IAS, how it works, wherein you'll be managing from OS onwards. So there you'll be taking care of patching. Obviously, we don't set it to auto updates, right? So we'll be controlling the what updates required to push. And when it comes to SaaS or PaaS, what will happen? We don't have any control on the OS. There, the OS and OS patching is taken care. Okay, it's totally it depends upon what type of services you are taking there. Okay, accordingly, the patching or whatever will be taken care. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions, any other doubts? Okay, all right, so let's start with the uh, overview of cloud computing. Okay, hello guys. Uh, so uh, if at all, if anyone has not shared your contact details, your phone number or email ID, uh, please uh, uh, provide your phone number and email ID in the chat box. We can uh, a chat to organizer so that the materials and the recording and the upcoming session details will be shared accordingly. Uh, Sandeep, uh, hope we don't have your details. Uh, if you could uh, share your details, so that will be helpful. Otherwise, we'll not be having any connect with you guys to share the the things. Okay. All right. So okay. if anyone is 
get your contact details uh, please share your contact details you can put it on the chat box to the visual path admin or the organizer yeah thank you guys okay so let's move on so we'll try to understand what is cloud computing here so now uh, the cloud computing here so before we understand what is computing so let's consider if you want to host any services okay so for that wherein you require the compute resource right so you require the compute resource like you require a cpu ram network os right and the and the hard disk or whatever right so once you have your compute component then you can host your application right so now here cloud computing can be defined as a delivering the computing power in the sense if you want to host any services in the cloud so wherein we'll be relying on the computing resource like cpu ram network storage os a service over a network so here if you take example of your gmail right so you access your mailbox from your phone or through a browser I mean, through app or a browser but your mailbox is hosted in the google environment right so it is sitting on top of the google hardware right so where you'll be accessing and managing your data over the internet so the same thing here also so when you want to host any services in the cloud like azure aws google whatever so wherein you will be consuming the resources which is present in their infrastructure okay and uh, rather than having the in uh, like the physical infrastructure in your premises right so cloud computing can be defined as a delivering computing power like cpu ram network storage os a service or a network usually on the internet right so this will be consuming over the internet so rather than having this physical environment in your premises right so now to access your mailbox gmail you don't have any physical environment in your place right so all those uh, physical components are present in the vendor right so on the google environment where you'll be accessing and managing through the internet okay all right so now what are the types of uh, cloud okay sorry benefits of the cloud computing why people are moving to the cloud what is the advantage so now the cost saving is the one major reason where people are adapting the cloud services correct now so let's take example uh, for your organization right so when you have some products where you want to sell it so for that you require an e-commerce website let's take it as a simple so now what will happen when you have this e-commerce website okay so you will be required a physical space you require a server hardware you require a storage hardware network hardware security device you require a power and you require a backup and uh, also you required uh, um, a people to deploy this uh, hardware and host your services right wherein you have to invest a lot of money a lot of time to host your infrastructure and for some reason if you want to shut down right so whatever you have invested will go under loss so now so same thing if you try to build in the cloud right so from the day one you can create your account and from the day one you can start hosting your services in the cloud and whatever you require to implement or host right so whenever you want to upgrade or downgrade right so anything you want to remove it you can do it as and when required okay and you'll be paying only for what you are using right so this is how the cloud will be cheaper for you but still the cloud is not cheaper right so whatever you require to host the same hardware is required on their end and uh, you'll be paying for that right and when you see the other perspective you know when you want to host in your environment you have to completely invest and as and when you want to upgrade your hardware you have to reinvest whenever you want to upgrade your os or software you have to reinvest right and also managing this infrastructure you have to pay your uh, maintenance for other people also right so there are many other things where you'll be investing and you'll be looking across right so when you see all this perspective the cloud works as a subscription model so i use this server or this particular resources for this duration and this is the cost it's pretty straightforward okay so this is how wherein the cloud will help you to save some money so the potential for cost saving is a major reason of cloud services adoption by many organization 
So cloud computing gives the freedom to use services as per the requirement and pay only for what you use, right? So whatever you are using, you'll be paying only for that. So due to this, cloud computing has become possible to run IT operations as an outsourced unit without much in-house resource, right? So without having much in-house resource, so we'll be able to host that. So, it's a, so lowering IT infrastructure cost is a one reason and improved performance, right? So now performance in the sense, whatever the configuration you want to go, yes, you can go for it. Maintenance, any unplanned and planned outages are taken care. So where in which cost your uh, business, right? So when there is a downtime, so which cost your business, right? So that is taken care and improved compatibility between the operating system, right? So whatever the OS version you want to run, right? You can host in the cloud and backup and recovery. Now you can use cloud as your backup solution and also you can use the cloud as your recovery option in the sense you can host your infrastructure in your premises. You can keep your data, the critical data, you can take a backup and you can keep it in the cloud. And you run your business critical application in on-prem. So whenever the on-prem is down, so your application will go down, which will have your impact on your application, right? So the downtimes. To overcome this, what you can do, you can keep your uh, infrastructure in on-prem. As a part of disaster, what we usually do, we will have one more physical place where we will replicate all those things, like uh, have the same similar hardware, uh, replicate all the data there. So instead of that, what you can do, you can build your infrastructure in the cloud and you can replicate the cloud. Means you can use cloud as a disaster recovery site as well, where you can save cost and performance and scalability cloud is always a scalable model so today i keep two vms tomorrow i want to keep 100 vms so today i keep 100 gb i want to increase yes i can do that and increase in storage capacity whatever the uh, amount of space you're looking to keep the data right you can use in the cloud data safety so any data which you are copying over the network or any data which you are uh, storing it locally there right so will be encrypted so you need not to worry about that. So these are the benefits what people are looking and they are adapting their cloud services. So that's why we're in the cloud adoption has become more popular in nowadays. Yeah, any questions, any doubts on this? Yeah, any questions, any doubts guys, let me know. Okay. All right. So today we just hold on here. So tomorrow we will continue with the, the types of cloud computing, types of cloud services. Okay. Yeah. Any questions, any doubts? Uh, <clears throat> what is the security? Actually, we, we host our organization. Everything is on the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any problem? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So now, what will happen here now? Uh, see, you take example of your Gmail itself. So now, your Gmail is hosted on the cloud itself, right now, where even uh, if I have a Gmail account, my mailbox will be hosted in the same environment. So that means that uh, uh, we will be keeping our infrastructure in a shared environment, but still, your gmail can be accessible only by you correct now so even the google people cannot access it in the sense they will follow the security standards like how the data will be stored the encryption part 
and the accessibility part and now whenever you're accessing your gmail from your phone right so your email or your data is access over the internet right so the data whichever is passing from your device to the the google data center will be encrypted in the sense the data in transit and data which is sitting on rest will be encrypted so you need not to worry about that so again there will be some standards wherein the, the cloud service provider will be following it in order to manage your data there okay Yeah. Any other questions, any other doubts? Okay, all right, guys. No worries. If at all, if you have any doubt, any questions, you can reach us anytime. Otherwise, we will discuss in the tomorrow class. And if at all, if anyone is not shared your uh, contact details, please leave your phone number and email ID in the chat box uh, to the organizer. So we'll be in touch with you to share the details and materials and updates on the next class. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. We'll connect. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye.